Well, my name is Stuart Bass. Uh, I go by the name of Stu. If anybody calls me Stuart, I think they're mad at me. Uh, I was born and raised in western Montana. Uh, went to school there, graduated university there. Went into the Navy in, in uh, well, and actually in 41, I was in the V-5 program and then uh, inducted actually into the Navy in early 42. And I stayed in the Navy till 1946. I had a lot of good missions. Uh, I think the one that was most memorable of all, of course, for all of us was, you know, if you've ever heard about the battleship Yamato and the cruiser Yohagi, uh, they were they were kind of the last of the Japanese Navy, and they left from the Curie area and were on their way to Okinawa. And their major job was to back like a kamikaze. They were going to beach the thing, ram it in, and then use their big guns to dispel the Marines that were knew were going to be landing in several days. And uh, somehow that we caught the thing halfway there and. Uh, it, it was a horrible day. The weather was worse than this, only it was a cloudy and the seating was like a thousand feet at the best and, and heavy, heavy clouds. And there were four carriers that I know that took off. There may have been more before that, but I keep coming back to the figure four. Anyway, one of the carriers never even found the fleet. Three of us did and they had taken us off in about 30 minute intervals from each of the carriers. And the Yorktown happened to be the last ones, and I have to come back to say that the Yorktown, with this record that it had by that time, I think the Admiral said, let them let them get the last of it because we know we'll get it done, you know. <laughs> we, we like that, but anyway, uh, one, of the, one of the four groups, I don't know which one it was, but never made it because they couldn't find the darn thing. It was terrible weather, but we all, the rest of us all found it. And uh, the dive bombers and the fighters and the torpedo planes had all hit the Yamato and the Yahagi. It was, the, uh, the, the battleship was lifting about 10 to 15 degrees and there was oil spewing out of the Yahagi, but still moving. And, uh, but they had been bouncing their torpedoes off the, the armor plating on that, on the big Yamato was about 24 inches, I, I say, in some place in that neighborhood, very, very thick on the surface, tapering down to 22 feet, where it was still heavy armor plating down, down there. All the other air groups that had their torpedoes set, which we all did when we took off at 12 feet, well, they were just hitting the darn thing and it wasn't doing any damage. Uh, the actual damage had been done basically by the dive bombers and the fighters. Well, our skipper was one of the greatest guys at going. And uh, he uh, uh, insisted that we figure out a way to get around that. So we cut a hole in the bomb bay in this thing and taught our, our radio man that he could reach through the arm's length just the butt to the end and happened to be where we, he could reach the setting that set the depth of the torpedo. So we reset our torpedoes down to 22 feet and we're going to go around on the high side. Well, when we had a pretty good target area, so we wanted to get the cruiser too, so the skippers split the squadron. Seven of us took the cruiser, six of them took the battleship. Set all their, we set our torpedoes on the, on the cruiser back up to a lesser depth, and the deep ones at, at, uh, uh, on the Yamato, and we all got, got our, our hits. We got five hits on the Yahagi, all five of the, of the guys on the Yamato and put it in under the armor plating and and I'm telling you when when that that big Yamato blew he got it in the magazines it was a mushroom just like an atomic bomb went run up into the clouds and uh, uh, it, it actually it rolled over it did not go bow first of that and of course when we got back in the interviews and everything they said they couldn't have done that we said it did because we watched it. And they found the thing about 10 years later on the bottom of the sea and all the big guns were upside down. So it kind of proved our point that, that and that's what had happened. I, I, I just can't say enough good about the mechanics aboard a carrier and particularly the kids that were on the flight deck, the most dangerous job there was in the, in the war, really. Uh, props going every way, all prop planes and the work they did and they worked 17, 18 hours, they were good. And of course you have to come back that 
we wouldn't have had those cares if it hadn't been for the people back home. When this opened up, I decided this is going to be a nice place. So I came out here, and I've been here ever since. And, and uh, I've done a lot of things when I was healthier and could do it. I'm now just the old man that can't lift the darn thing and do much, but I, I thoroughly enjoy the place. And uh, what we're doing is, is, is just great. And I think we finally got uh, the board and the whole thing is coming together. We're getting some more money. We're doing a good job. And the, uh, I guess our, our real plan is to educate people about the Second World War and about any war, but particularly the Second World War because we love the planes of the Second World War, which we have in here. But to teach them, other, but more than anything, we get the kids from the school, five or six hundred of them in the winter time, and be able to bring them in and try to teach them something, you know. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of a slow, tough job, but as we get bigger and better, I know we're going to be able to do it. We're hoping with a new hangar or the hangar that's coming up between the two that we can have an auditorium to bring them in and set them down and tell them a little about what they're going to do and then get them organized and then bring them through and teach them something. And, and uh, there's a lot of teaching going on now. Well, as I say, the, the, the museum, I think, is a, is a great asset to the community. And, and uh, I can't say enough good about all the people that have worked at it, uh, the, the board members, the guys that really formed it. And we've, we've come a long ways, but we've got a long ways to go yet. But uh, it, it is something that the community should be really proud of. And, and the return uh, things that we get from people that have been here and come back again say it's one of the greatest things they've, they've seen. And, and so they really like it. And that's what we're trying to do. I think uh, I, I can't compliment our own crews enough now of what's done and what they're planning so that it gets better all the time. I'm no damn hero. I'm just happened to be at the right place at the wrong time or the right time. I don't know what you call it.